Um, Nadine and Jacob are both PhD candidates in Michigan Tech's mathematical science departments, and they're both what I would call super TAs um, in the sense that they've been recognized at least on campus and in some cases outside of campus um, with teaching awards. Uh, both have made presentations at um, previous conferences um, on teaching and are really doing a great job of contributing not only at Michigan Tech but to the broader body of uh, teaching knowledge. So I want to introduce uh, Nadun and Jacob to talk about um, start point quizzes. Uh, so thanks, thanks, Mike, for the really kind introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Jacob. Uh, Nadun, do you want to quickly say hello to? Yeah, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Hi, I am Nadun. And uh, so for our presentation, we're hoping by the end you will understand what we mean by star points, as well as know what online chat space we were using to implement star points. But to begin our presentation, we really want to focus in on what are we meaning by methods of student engagement. Um, so we kind of approach this with three main ideas in mind. The first is to make sure to improve student to student engagement. So we have all taught courses and we all know inevitably students have questions about course material at some point in time and additionally usually there will be some other peers in the course that might be able to answer the original students question so we want to create some sort of way for students to be able to organically interact and exchange this information with each other in addition to having two students interacting with each other, we also want to be able to improve instructor student engagement. And this, it, in particular, is more for outside of class meetings, not just for inside of class meetings where they're already, that tends to be where most of that type of engagement happens. And this can be done with things like online office hours or by um, giving feedback to any activities that you happen to implement in your online chat spaces. And if you're implementing activities in your online chat spaces, you want to make sure that these are going to be an engaging activity. So a main goal of ours was to make sure to avoid the activity we are all familiar with probably for online discussions, which is post some sort of a comment and then reply to three of your peers' comments. Um, because in math courses, this activity can be really hard to make effective. So we set out to kind of develop a toolbox of other activities that would work in our courses and we hope might also be able to work in other people's courses as well. Um, the star point activities originated actually in one of Nadun's courses uh, and I thought it was such a cool idea that I asked if I could tag along and he let me. So last fall I, I was teaching two sections of our pre-calculus course to implement them and so to give a feel of what type of students we were interacting with in pre-calculus these are primarily first year uh, undergraduates um, that were not prepared to enter calculus uh, and before COVID, all sections of pre-calculus were taught face-to-face, -face, usually with about 30 to 35 students per section. And this is what's known on our campus as a coordinated course, meaning we have one course coordinator that assigns common homework and common exams for all the sections. Um, and then I'll throw it over to Nadun to talk about his elementary differential equations course. So yeah, so I taught elementary differential equation course, which is actually a math course for upper level students. And it was a non-coordinated course at that time. And actually I taught two sections of the differential equation course. Uh, one section was online where I had about 22 students and the other section was an on-campus course, which we nowadays say face-to-face -face courses. And we, I had about 78 students. So we gave these activities a fancy name. We call them star points activities. Uh, first of all, because we wanted to differentiate them from other homework assignments. And also we wanted to establish a fair grading criteria to assist these assignments. So here's how it works. So during the semester, all these activities will count towards participation. And participation will uh, represent about 4 or 5% from their final grade. And then there are three main participation assignments during three periods of the semester. So the periods are like, so from the beginning of the semester to exam one, first period, exam one to exam two, second period, and exam two to final exam, third period. And all the students will start each period with zero star points. And this is a cumulative assignment. So, um, so they would do activities on in the online chat space and then they gradually 
earn star points. So their target is to earn about 78 star points for each period. So what are the activities we did? Well, I'll give you a summary here, but we will go into a deep discussion later in this presentation about these activities. So first activity is like we asked conceptual type of questions in our online chat space and then students were rewarded for asking questions and uh, responding to other students uh, uh, questions and then we are uh, uh, asked uh, exam oriented exam review questions and also at the end of each week we ask students to create a mind map or short note about the stuff they learn and post that in PF in the online chat space and uh, if they were allowed to use a note card in one of their quizzes or in exams, we encourage them to share it in the online chat space. So what's the online chat space we used? Well, actually we use Piazza. Uh, there are many advantages for using Piazza. Um, it's already embedded in Canvas and students can be anonymous to their peers and we can easily type math equations. We can easily give feedback as instructors. Um, however, it can be a little bit hard to manage everything in Piazza, but it's not something uh, impossible to do. So now I'll hand it over to Jacob to start talking about our activities. So one of the first activities that we did was this idea of a concept assessment. And the main goal here was to give students additional practice with key concepts that you either are going to be covering in your course or that you maybe already covered in the previous week. And what this is meant to be is just a couple of quick extra practice problems for the students to try and then be able to get feedback on how that they are doing. With this activity and all the rest of our activities, we wanted to make sure to develop a rubric that would be very easy to assign to score, allow us to post comments to a student for any of their submissions, and then for any students that happen to fall short of getting full credit, we wanted to make sure that it would the rubric would allow them to make corrections. So all of these uh, assignments are meant to be more forms of formative assessment rather than summative assessment. And for concept assessments in particular, it was kind of a mixed bag of results. These are quotes from students from the first two. You can see they both enjoyed the concept assessment activities and then there were some other students that just did not enjoy Piazza in general and I'll have a little bit more to say on that at the end of the presentation. Um, but for right now, we also wanted to be able to show you what our rubrics look like. This uh, is a, an exact reproduction of the rubric we provided to our students, and our goal was always ease of use. So when a student submits a response, if it had the correct solution and enough justification and correct justification, it would receive what we would call full star points that we assigned a value of just three star points in this case. Anything responses that fell short of that, so a wrong solution or not enough justification, or wrong justification would receive one star point. And the one star point is meant to say we're acknowledging your submission, so here's some credit, thank you for making a submission, but here are some comments about ways that you can improve your response. Students then have the option to either make corrections or not. If they make the corrections and then re-upload their response, they get an additional two star points, which brings them back up to full credit for what that question was. So. Um, what might one of these look like? This is an example from in my course, which was one of our concept of questions from the first week. On the left, on the bottom, you will see a response, the initial response from one of the students that was very good and almost fully correct, but unfortunately missing some clear labeling on the axis of the graph, which is something I emphasize, especially in the pre-calculus course. So the student received one star point and then a comment saying, if you label your graph clearly and re-upload, you'll get four full star points points, which is what the photo on the right is. And you can see when we're saying corrections, it doesn't mean that they had to rewrite out the whole solution from scratch. They literally can just revise on whatever initial piece of paper they were writing on and re-upload that. So that's our first activity and I, Nadoon has our next one. So the second activity is actually we rewarded our students for asking quality questions and uh, providing quality answers. So the whole goal here is to improve student-student engagement and faculty-student engagement. So the advantage of this is we wanted to give a students a chance to ask questions remotely and get answered. And the good thing is that in Piazza, students can anonymously interact with their peers and we can constantly give feedback 
feedback. Uh, and we came up with a rubric to grade uh, this uh, because some students might abuse the system. You know, uh, they would ask questions just to get star points. So in that case, we come up with a very simple criteria and it's a very low stake assignment uh, activity. So students would get three star points for asking a quality question or providing a quality response or two star points uh, for providing a response. Maybe it's not clear, but it's, it's on the right line. Now, how do we, how do we distinguish a quality question or a, or a question that's worth point or that's not worth point? So think about this. So they have a question in the homework. They ask, how can I solve this problem? Well, that's not a good question, but you can convert it into a good question by taking a photo of your work and post it in, in, post it in Piazza, right? So we constantly encourage them, advocated them to write better questions and it forces them to write better questions. So for example, here the student uh, explained what's the problem is, showed their work so we can understand their level, uh, current understanding. And on the right, you can see another good thing with the Piazza is that we can easily give feedback in Piazza. We can endorse a student's answer. So if a student's answer is clear enough and accurate enough, we can just endorse it. And then we not necessarily we don't need to provide a feedback, additional feedback. But as a, as a good practice, we added something extra or we validated students' point to, uh, to make sure that there's no confusion. Um, and then Jacob will discuss the third activity. So uh, the third activity that we did was this idea of exam reviews, which is pretty self-explanatory for the goal, which is to just give students extra practice before the exams are coming along. Um, and grading for it would have been the exact same rubric that we already talked about with the concept assessments. And we made some nice observations with this activity. Um, so it definitely gives students extra practice, which is helpful. Um, and then it also gave a chance, the, something that I think is extra valuable to students is it gives them a chance to receive some meaningful feedback on exam targeted questions prior to taking a big assessment. So they have a chance to correct any fundamental misconceptions that they might be having before the big test rather than taking the test and then losing a lot of points on it. Um, another benefit that I personally like is with these exam review keys, a big time sink for instructors can often be to like create your own keys. But by letting students do this in Piazza and be sharing their responses to questions, they are actually creating their own keys and students wind up creating a full key for the review guide all on their own. Now, this is still not a perfect activity. You do need to be careful about how you organize Piazza, so that way it is easily set up for yourself to navigate and for your students to navigate. And uh, you want to be smart and be careful, so that way you don't wind up too bogged down with grading. And at the end of the day, the key for this activity is student buy-in. For the students that buy-in and do it, they see and reap a lot of benefits from it. Um, so it's about making sure to encourage them to be active and proactive in actually doing these activities. And uh, so we have another example. Um, once again, should feel very, very similar to our concept assessments. The three things that I want to highlight here are that um, when posting exam reviews, I would always post an exam review packet that would be separate questions. Um, Nadoon would just upload old exams from his course, so you can make it as robust as you want for um, whatever you're uploading. It is nice that you do upload something that has sort of a common worksheet for students to perform their answers on. It makes it easier to grade and makes it easier for students to organize their self-generated key as well. Um, and with that, uh, a benefit when they're making their keys is so far we've only seen paper pencil responses but for students they can really interact with these documents however is easiest for them so this student uh, on the left is their initial response on the right is their corrected response and they were doing their uh, work either on a computer or on a tablet of some sort which is really cool um, and the last thing to emphasize with these exam activities is that it doesn't need to be a pre-exam exercise only you can do the same thing for post exams and have students answer their own questions or correct their own errors and generate their own exam keys for you as well. And then Nadoon has our almost last activity. Um, so 
the most successful activity that we did in Piazza is that we asked students to post a, post a mind map or a short note at the end of every week to Piazza summarizing everything that they learned during that week. And this mind map or short note can be handwritten. They can work it out on a paper, take a photo and upload it into Piazza. Or they can use a software like M8, uh, which you can see on the bottom right corner, a student created a mind map using uh, the software M8 by Microsoft. Um, so we again have a rubric to uh, grade this and also we encourage students to make corrections. So they get a second chance to make corrections to their mind map and short note. And students uh, found this very beneficial. Actually, uh, most of these benefits are these uh, things that students told us. They told us that it helped them to reinforce what they learn and stop them from procrastinating, like waiting until the exam to look back at their notes and it forced them to take notes during the lecture or while watching a video and uh, more importantly it, it created a good study practice for some students and a good study aid that they can use uh, to study prepare for exams and from an instructor's perspective uh, it helped us to understand figure out the misconceptions that they have at the end of each week so it's all about actually correcting from your mistakes that's what we wanted so uh, we, we saw most of the time that most of the misconceptions are actually common misconceptions. So you can take them and you can answer them in, the, in your next class in the next week. And that's a good thing. And in my course, actually, I allow them to use mind maps and short notes for their quizzes uh, as a replacement for note cards. And students found it helpful and it was kind of a motivator too. And another thing that students told us is that, you know, in the beginning of the semester, they were skeptical about the activity, but then they later found out that it's actually helped them to develop a very good uh, study practice. Now, this is fairly a high stake assignment. Um, so they would get six star points for neat and clearly organized, accurate, uh, uh, accurate mind map, six star points. And then uh, they can get two extra star points if they went above and beyond and you know explain everything from their own words, provide examples if necessary, and then make it aesthetic, then they can get eight star points. Uh, students would get four star points if they have like a one misunderstanding, well, maximum two misunderstanding or two inaccuracies, but they, they can still make changes and still can get six or eight star points. Same with two star points. If they have more than two misconceptions or misunderstanding, uh, we will provide them feedback. They can make corrections and they can still get six or eight star points. So here's an example. Uh, for example, uh, on the on the left uh, on the left corner, we have a mind map where it is very well organized it's great but it's missing a one important concept so we would only give four star points in the beginning but then student uh, added the theorem that they are missing so on the right you can see the change mind map and they it this is eligible for six or even eight star points so here's a mind map with eight star points uh, students explained everything uh, using their own words provided examples whenever necessary and went above and beyond to make it look nicer so that this is something that they can preserve for future study um, and they can create short notes as well um, so these are from Jacob's class so even in a class like pre-calculus at the end of each week they can definitely find something that that's they can summarize and you know uh, rethink about what they have learned at the end of the each week and Jacob will discuss the next activity yep so we are also approaching the end so just a quick shout out to what was posted in the chat uh, to make sure to be assigning which breakout room you're interested in which you can do as we are wrapping up here um, so note cards were meant purely for pre-calculus students because they were not allowed to use mind maps on assessments but they were allowed a note card um, so if they uploaded it it was purely a participation grade I did not check it for accuracy but it was a way for students to share their resources before their exams um, and then next slide, Nadun. So for this, uh, we are now at our end. And uh, these two comments, I think, 
perfectly summarize our experiences from the student's perspective. The first is from pre-calculus and the second is from differential equations. So for my pre-calculus students, they got to do all of these Piazza activities plus having a regular web assign homework set as well, um, which ultimately was just too much work for them. So I had to really rein in Piazza at the end. Uh, so be mindful of what your setup is that you already are assigning work for when you're adding in Piazza and bear in mind what the maturity level of students is too for how much work they can expect because Nadoon students seem to a lot more organically enjoy these activities I think from just a few more semesters of experience in college courses um, for appreciating how these uh, activities could augment their study um, habits. Uh, so from instructor's perspective, we saw an increase in instructor student and student student engagement. Uh, we were constantly able to provide feedback at the end of every week. And also uh, in some classes there, there was higher student-student uh, student engagement, but in other classes I had to constantly encourage, motivate them to have more student-student engagement. And as Jacob said, we do not recommend to do all these activities if you decide to do them. The mind map activity and then rewarding students for asking questions and exam review questions, those type of activities can be a very good addition to your course. And you have to be, you have to use your office hours very efficiently. For example, if you ask students to post everything on Sunday, you can use your Monday office hours to grade them. Use office hours themselves for grading work and then provide time to uh, uh, make corrections. And then on your Wednesday or Thursday office hours, again, you can grade your great uh, corrections and with, there are tons of tip, tips and tricks that we can share in our breakout room and we are happy to share our rubric documents they are easily adaptable you can change them they you can easily use them and thank you very much uh, for the organizers thank you for uh, giving us a chance uh, in this presentation series and then thank you for the audience for participating in our presentation and there are three special people we would like to thank here at the end uh, first uh, dr shari stokerio she did a study about this with us in the last fall and she helped us a lot and and humes and dr uh, gokenback both of them actually gave us permission to uh, do this study in the last fall so we want to thank uh, three of them as well and thank you very much and we are happy to answer any of your questions thank you